Have you had trouble learning something when you're not able to watch both of your hands at the same time? Well, I certainly have, and I've found an approach that seems to help with this. So stay tuned and let me tell you all about it. Are you sitting comfortably? Then let's begin. Hi, this is Tommy with Tommy's Piano Corner. The place for returning pianists, or indeed anybody who loves a piano, to share tips and ideas of how to get the best from this great hobby. If this is your first trip here, then please remember to subscribe. Just hit the little icon in the bottom right hand corner of your screen and it's all done for you. If you've seen any of my other practice tips videos, then you'll probably know at the moment one of the pieces I'm learning is the Liebestraum number no. 3 by Liszt. You know, this is something that's probably well beyond my current technical ability, but I like to have at least a couple of pieces that really, really stretch me to learn at a time. Possibly the most difficult part for me is the middle section in E major, where you have the octaves in both hands and the arpeggio in the middle of the octaves and your hands are jumping in opposite directions. You know, this is something on a good day I can play. I created a set of exercises that definitely helped me to get it under control, but it's still at the point where I wouldn't dare play it publicly for somebody, even somebody just visiting the house, because it's still a little error prone. And if you miss one of those octaves, it's really painful on the ears at that kind of dynamic. One day I had this sort of mini eureka moment whilst I was practicing. I noticed that whenever I needed, especially practicing hands together, to move my hands either from the arpeggios to the octaves or in the other direction from the octaves to the arpeggios, my eyes would suddenly start dancing all over the keyboard, trying to work out where to look, trying to look at every hand at once. And it was almost as if my brain was spending 80% of its capacity trying to decide where to focus my eyes and only 20% on actually controlling my hands, which is of course the most important bit probably here. I then decided what I could build into my practice was to decide up front exactly where I intend to look when I'm playing this piece, and then to practice my exercises with my eyes staying right in the place that I want them to be focusing. So of course, being right-handed, it was simpler for me to think about not watching my right hand and letting my eyes guide my left hand. So to make this happen, I first started practicing the right hand only whilst looking away from my hand, so definitely not looking anywhere near my hand, and kept practicing it until the point that I almost knew before I had hit the note whether or not I had successfully negotiated the jump. Then the next thing I did was to practice just the octaves hands together. But even though this, you know, for your fingers is not a great challenge to do, I was mainly really concentrating on my eyes, to be honest. So making sure that my eyes stayed firmly where I wanted them to stay when I eventually play it, which for me is the area around the pinky of my left hand. Now, I know that some people will say you should really try and watch the thumb of your left hand when playing octaves because that's closer, I guess, to the middle of the piano. But I don't know why, for me, it's not really ever been easy for me to do that, and I find it more natural just to watch my pinky. And then I simply continued with the exercise that I developed previously that were in my last video. But this time, of course, working through those exercises whilst keeping my eyes firmly focused on my left hand and allowing my right hand to find its own way unaided. This might be more psychological than anything else, I guess, but one thing I'm also focusing on at the moment is a feeling of confidence as I move my hands. So I know that I'm moving them confidently to the right place and that I'm not going to play a wrong note. So far, this approach seems to be really paying off. 
I've noticed that I'm becoming increasingly consistent when I play this section, and I'm also able to maintain the double forte dynamic right the way through it. What I'd noticed previously was that as I went from octave to octave, there was a sort of psychological stress that the next one wouldn't land, even if I played the previous one correctly. So much so, by the time I got to the end of that section where it modulates to the B flat chord, I was so stressed that I wouldn't get the perfect set that I would quite often not be able to play that final one very loudly at all. I published a video a while ago about what I think is a relationship between fear of playing a wrong note and tension building up in your hands. That was more focused on speed, but I think the same principle applies here. Once you get to the point that you're not expecting to play a wrong note, your hand just automatically remains more relaxed, but you have to train yourself to have this feeling of confidence, I believe. I'd notice also in other pieces that I've learned that it can sometimes be very beneficial to practice without looking at a specific hand. So for example, when I was learning what I call the main run-up in Chopin C-sharp minor waltz, which I'm sure you've noticed I include in the introduction to all of my videos, it took me a long time before I got this to feel very, very secure. And actually what made quite a difference for me was that when I used to practice hands separately, because I was practicing, say, just my right hand, then naturally my eyes would look at my right hand. However, when I came to play these hands together, because it's my left hand that's jumping around the keyboard a little bit in this passage, then my eyes were firmly focused on my left hand and not my right. So in fact, it got a lot better when I started practicing it hands separately without looking at my right hand. So I think the key takeaway from this video is if you're going to be playing something where you know you're not going to be able to watch both hands at the same time, then as you work it out initially when you start learning the piece, decide at that point where you're going to look. And when you practice, always make sure that you practice looking at the hand you've chosen or the area of the piano that you've chosen. And that might mean even practicing with your eyes closed in some parts to make sure that you don't look at the hand that you're not supposed to be looking at. It's certainly something that I've started building into the way I approach new bits of music now as I start to learn them. If you try it out, do let me know in the comments below how useful you find it. Of course, don't forget to subscribe to Tommy's Piano Corner and click that little bell icon so you're notified of new videos as and when they're released. I thank you very much for watching as always and I'll see you next week.